Hey, uh, Dak, you ever heard of Joe Boo? James. I know who it is, man. You know who it is. I've been hung out with him. Boom. I'm doing great, man. Congratulations on the baby, man. That's a beautiful thing. Dak, there's your buddy. Hey. <laughs> well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great week. Hope you had a great labor day weekend but the summer is now over well not officially but it's over because everybody's back in school the holidays are over with and football begins in just two days wow the long off season of our discontent is almost over and maybe just maybe the dallas cowboys can turn that frown upside down and be better than what people think the thing about the cowboys for me it's funny it seems when there's expectation, and expectations are the building blocks of resentment. When the Cowboys are expected to do great things, it seems like that's when they just don't. It's oftentimes when they're overlooked that the Dallas Cowboys achieve the most. And I'm hoping that maybe that'll be the case this year. That maybe all of the trash and things that we've heard, all of the bullshit that they've taught, when you start seeing players like Jordan Lewis literally say, I can't emphasize enough how much I hate you, mother humpers, then you know that people are getting fed up to hear. We've heard so many people just denigrating the players, the team, and disrespecting them that I hope that that gives the Cowboys a little bit extra mm, this year. Now, we may have some clarification according to um, Scoop City. Shout out to Scoop City. Uh, the channel and stuff is growing like crazy. With uh, Dana Russo on there. This is what she's saying is the reason that the contract is being held up at the moment. Let's go to the tape here. To ease the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. Dak is a lame duck quarterback. Diana. Lame duck, damn. What are you hearing about this? Is it the money? Or is it the years? The holdup at this point, from what I understand, is about the years the Dallas Cowboys are willing to commit to. Really? Really? Well, Listen, Chase, it's they assumed just, really? that Dak is going to be paid at the top of the market. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dallas Cowboys are, are aware of that. It's do they want to put themselves in a, in a position contractually that will keep Dak in Dallas longer than two, three, four years. And that's what Dak is looking for. He's looking for a long-term commitment from oh, Dallas. Interesting. So the holdup here is, is really the belief from the Dallas Cowboys, this is a guy who's won a lot of games, but is that enough? Winning is not enough for Jerry Jones, right? We know this. Oh, they want to do more. Steven Jones told us that. They, want, they don't want to just be the team that wins a lot of games. They want to be the team that can play in the Super Bowl. And but is it all on deck, though? That, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's all on deck. And, and, and yes, he has been good, mm -hmm. if not great, in regular season. He's been very bad in the postseason. Mm -hmm. But eventually, if I'm Stephen Jones or Jerry Jones, you got to look at the other options out there. Okay? There's not that many. Are they willing to start over? Why can't you do? And, and this is what I'm gathering from you. And just tell, you don't got to tell me, tell me if I'm tracking here, is that they want a shorter term contract, but also I could see them next year or the year after drafting a guy in the first round to sort of sit under Dak. That's how I view it. Yeah, because let, let's just quickly remind you guys, no trade clause, right? First of all, they can't tag them for the th mm -hmm. third time because that would cost them $80 million. So I can do much that. money. They have no quarterbacks under contract for 2025. Not even Trey Lance. Trey Lance is a third string. Like. <laughs> not even Cooper Rush. Okay, yeah. so they have no plan at quarterback. And then if they do lose him to free agency, it's going to be $40 million uh, of, dead of a money. dead cap hit. 
for the Dallas Cowboys, right? Do you know what this is all called? What I just pointed out? Leverage. No. Nope. Leverage. That's he has the most leverage is. out of any quarterback. Pay the I've man. never seen something like this before. Yeah. This is, we're bending your ass over backwards. That's, uh, th- that's unfortunately the case. Where, where it's all just in his court. He's literally just sitting there with his hands behind his head, which is, we've seen a lot of his press conferences, and and he's as cool and calm as they come. And, and yeah, because he, he knows. Because like, he knows. He knows he's going to get what he needs to get, no matter what how the situation plays out. Either he stays in Dallas, and, and they wind up coming to an agreement here over the next few days, or he hits free agency, and we have a number of teams that would be interested. So we, we oh, should yeah. definitely do that uh, for one of our episodes. Let's let's dive into which teams we think oh my gosh. would be in on Dak Prescott. Well, I think I it's going like to be five of the top the of my Cow- head. Right I think now, but- it'll be Dallas Cowboys. So let's just mark this down yeah. before we okay, move on. Okay, fine. Diana Rossini said that she has never seen a quarterback have as much leverage as Dak Prescott has over the Cowboys. Let's move mm-hmm. on. Speaking of week one, because we just talked about, are these guys going to be under contract for week one? Let's get to our surprise teams. You don't like lists. Okay, there you have it. The deal, the, the issue with the deal here is the length of the contract. And I'm kind of thinking here, I guess you want to have the security and not have to worry about um, whether or not, um, you know, you have to look for another job down the road. The Cowboys are probably thinking, okay, Dak is 30 years old. You know, we, we, we don't want to be in a situation where he's now diminishing returns and they'd probably like to have a shorter deal, which is interesting if the Cowboys actually wanted a shorter deal because typically the Cowboys want longer deals, not shorter ones. But, you know, then again, at this point, maybe they're looking at it and saying, we don't have a choice right now. We get Dak Prescott for a couple of years, and then we start the succession plan and get the next guy. Maybe it's Trey Lance ends up staying with the Cowboys, and they try and develop him to go after it. And then they can say, we can be free of that contract. If you're Dak, I could see a scenario where I look at it and say, you know, let me give Cowboys a couple more years. And if that doesn't work, let me be that free agent and be able to go out there and find the team that I can win a Super Bowl with. To me, I don't see where it's a problem. But then again, maybe Dak Prescott looks at it and says, I want to be a Dallas Cowboy for life. Stay tuned, people. Um, I'm going to say I haven't seen Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones that much recently. So maybe they are in there pounding away and trying to get this thing done. If it's not done by... Saturday? I don't know that they're going to be working on it on Sunday. Unless they announce it right before the game. That that Maybe that's the plan. That they get this thing hammered out and before the game, bam, he gets paid. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that situation here. So the Cowboys, of course, this is the first game week. And the Cowboys are on the practice field early in Oxnard. I'm oh, assuming in Dallas. Uh, because, well, let's face it. It gets hot <laughs> in Texas. So getting out there early behooves you as you get ready for the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are a little bit more nicked up than the Dallas Cowboys. Now, an interesting thing, I don't know if it's interesting or not, but over the course of about the last 10 years, the Cowboys have not been good on week one. They did win last year. Now, here's, here's where it gets to be crazy. During the Jason Garrett era, it makes no sense. Every time the Cowboys won the season opener, they missed the playoffs under Jason Garrett. And you might remember Michael Anthony Fitness um, always saying, I want to lose the first game, just because it always was like a foregone conclusion. When the Cowboys won that first game, they ain't making the playoffs. Those 8-8, 8-8, 8-8 years, yeah, those were, were years that we won the first game. But last year they kind of broke the mold beating the New York Giants in the season opener and going on and playing in the playoffs. Now, <clears throat> the weird thing is, more times than not, the Cowboys have played the Giants as a season opener over the last 10 years. I'd say like at least half of them. It was crazy because it's like every year, a uh, season opener is going to be the Giants. But the Cowboys only won against the Giants during that 10-year period. Against the other teams, 
they were losing. And that was 49ers. That was Tampa Bay twice. Um, I can't remember what the other teams were. But hopefully that curse is over with. Now, the Dallas Cowboys are going to try and do something that hasn't been done in the NFC East in 20 years. And it's going to be a tall task. The Cowboys had the first place schedule uh, by most people's um, thoughts they didn't do enough to make the team better. In fact, some people think the team is worse. But repeating as division champions would go a long way to helping you go further in the playoffs. In fact, I dare say getting home field advantage would go an even further way of helping you to get deep into the playoffs. But we got to take this one game at a time. The Cleveland Browns have four players that are nicked up, including their uh, left tackle. Um, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Let's see. Um, Willis, um, Willis, a wide receiver, Hopkins, and David Bell, and defensive tackle Shelby Harris are not practicing. So, um, Jarek Willis, who is their starting left tackle, is uh, recovering from a knee injury. And what they're probably going to be doing is they're going to be bringing in um, uh, their right tackle. Um, the right tackle who tore his knee up the first week of last year, and he has not played left tackle in 10 years. He will be looking like he's going to be the starter for week one. So that might be a little advantage there on the left side that maybe Micah gets to eat a little bit more to start the week. You got Deshaun Watson who has had a sore shoulder, injured his shoulder again last offseason, and a bit on the hot seat. Uh, we all talk about how much money Dak Prescott's making and uh, will get and stuff, but the Cleveland Browns had to restructure his contract where he was a $63 million cap hit this year. Um, they did get themselves $35 million. They actually have $50 million in cap space right now, which I don't know if they're going to try and make a move, a major move or something. Uh, probably won't be before week one, or they roll it over because they literally have next year seventy-three million fully guaranteed cap hit for Deshaun Watson and the year after. So that that's some big money here for a guy who was disappointed for them the last two seasons. So there we are, Cowboys practicing. It looks like everybody is going to be on the field, and the Cowboys for the most part are about as healthy as can be. And it sounds like Mike McCarthy in his press conference was saying that um, Rico will definitely be doing less special teams work. And generally speaking, if you're doing special teams, you're not a starter. And so the speculation is that Rico uh, is going to be the starting running back, running back one. Dalvin Cook, of course, who just got here, probably won't be on the 53-man roster this week. And um, don't expect him to be in anytime soon. I think... The plan for Dalvin Cook and actually Zeke and, and all of the running backs, because you have to think that Rico has had injury issues. And, of course, Zeke has had the last couple of years. Not, last year, not so much. But the two previous years with us, he had the PCL injury and he had the uh, hyperextended knee. I think the plan going forward is going to be to try and keep the running back room as fresh as possible hopefully that they make the playoffs and that we actually have some momentum with the running game as we get there. The thing that's going to be interesting is, is when we look at rookies, we can look at, um, let's take Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup, I know this is not a great example, but Michael Gallup, his rookie year, he started off really slow. By the middle of the year, he had picked it up and was actually looking really, really good. And this is kind of the thing that you see with rookies. The first couple of games, they may not quite get it. Micah Parsons was good, but he became great by the end of the year. And this may be the case where you have Cooper Beebe and Tyler Guyton, who are now starting week one on your offensive line and things. And going you know, with Miles Garrett and everything else and the Cleveland Browns defense, which is really, really good. But... I will point out something here. I don't know if people realize that the Cleveland Browns roster is the oldest roster in the NFL. Yeah. Cleveland's roster is the oldest roster in the NFL. This is where youth may come in handy because the Cowboys will be relying on a lot of young guys, a lot of unnamed, 
unproven guys to be able to step up from Overshone, Tyler Guyton, Cooper, BB, even Mozzie Smith and things. If these guys can perform well, we could be in great shape. So what we're, the hope is that they're good, but that they get better and they start peaking towards the end of the year. Um, because ultimately, that's what you want. You need to be going into playoffs, if we make it that far, with some momentum. And let's go through here as we get ready to rock and roll and get out of here. Let's take a look and listen to what the hater group has to say. I'm curious to see if after all of the blowback that they got last week, let's be clear, Mike Tenenbaum sounds like the biggest idiot out there, you know, basically saying that the Cowboys should trade for Sadur Sanders after saying, you know, two days before that they should lock uh, themselves in the room with Todd France and Dak Prescott and hammer out the deal. Um, they're beginning to look like the clown show. So I'm curious to see if they try and turn this thing around because you may be seeing the end or the evolution of dispute, debate, talk shows, because they kind of have gotten to be old rag another but he's got a master plan for week one and well beyond here's what he said <laughs> it's not hard to focus on cleveland i mean it's it's you know it's it's what's right in front of us um yeah you have to have a plan um you know my plans for 21 games uh we have a 21 game plan um laid it out today in the team meeting so everyone of course jumps on that and seizes on it you know because i mean What's he supposed to say? We're, yeah. I, I've got an 18-game plan. Right, right, right. We always lose in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, right, right. I mean, what's he supposed to say? Right. right. I mean, that's, there's nothing wrong with I him thought, saying that. I thought, yeah, he's not shooting high enough because if you 20, if you get the one seed. That's right. Pointed out. What? They yeah. can't. They can't because it hasn't happened in 20 years. He can't, he can't win a division. told me for 10 years since I've been working with him. <laughs> it's not going to happen, sir. And he's always right. McCarthy's so, just doing gras math. He, he knows the rules. Go to 21. We're not going to win the division, but we're going to be in the hunt. <laughs> okay. So let's make sure everyone is as ready for this weekend as they need to be. Because Graziano, who was out there on his training camp tour, you're you already in midseason form. Most of us are just getting caught up with everything. So we look at the Browns and we say this is a team that finished so strong last year, mm. made the playoffs with Joe Flacco, that defense is elite. There are some questions about Cleveland in week one. Mainly health, right? I mean, like right. they haven't, both tackles have, have had a hard time getting on the field this offseason. It looks like Jack Conklin might be able to play, but he may have to play left tackle because Jedrick Wills is hurt. Right. So, and, and the defense, they got some guys working their way back from injury too. I think the Browns are going to have a very good team this year. Uh, a lot depends obviously on the quarterback, Deshaun Watson and how he plays, but uh, they may not be all the way whole just just yet for a game mm -hmm. against Micah Parsons and the Cowboys. That, that's something to keep your eye on as we get set for Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big spotlight game, right? It is Brady, or, Tom Brady's game. first game as an announcer and everything else. And, and then there is the question. I'm Brady announcing. I, 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 I freaking love Grady. That's where that's we're at right now. Yeah, let's talk big, about it's a big deal. deal. It's a pretty big but deal. But it is a big deal. But let's, yeah, let's talk about the game. Let's talk about the game. I'm happy to talk okay, about the game. I appreciate that. I think Brady's presence in the booth will be a major factor, don't you? No. I'm tuning in, no doubt. Hawk, the, 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 the whole Friends, season, my name's Mark Holmes, and this is my buddy Cowboy all Joe. All the craziness and everything else. That's all behind us now. Let's go on the field. C.D. Lamb has been in camp for, what, six days? He's going to have a total of less than two weeks. So for the Cowboys' chances of winning, for the folks who have fantasy implications, mm -hmm. who may have, you know, prop bet implications, yep. what percentage of C.D. Lamb's best should we be expecting on the field Sunday in Cleveland? I, I would say 85 at most, and that does not dictate his ability. He's still C.D. Lamb, but he has not been in camp running the 10 miles of full-speed routes that a receiver needs to get ready for a mm. season. We talk about football shape all the time, and the only way to get in football shape mm. is to play football. Yeah, that's true. There's a higher level than that. There is getting in wide receiver shape in the NFL, and it is even harder than getting in NFL shape because these are the guys that sprint and run the most. There's going to be a lot of wear and tear he's about to put on his body, and if his body yep. isn't prepared for it, you got to be uh, uh, prepared for him not to be at the full speed, full strength, for the duration that you typically see him. And he's the linchpin in this offense. So without him being able to be that, there's absolutely a, a, a degrade that you're going to see from the Dallas Cowboys offense against a really good Browns defense. I'm going to say something that 
is probably going to make everyone yell at me, but I'm right. And that is that, look, this is, it's going to feel like an enormous game, right? Because Tom Brady's in yeah. the booth and everything else. <laughs> yes. But the, the reality is it's a road game against an AFC opponent. Right. Mm-hmm. This, this game will not decide the Cowboys season. It is not worth yep. having C.D. Lamb getting the hamstring injury that all these guys get. So I'm not suggesting don't play him. Don't be ridiculous. Right, right. But I'm saying caution is, is, the, is the proper route to you, right? Discretion, the better part of valor, whatever expression yeah. I'm looking right. for. Mm-hmm. I'm not putting him in a position, even if it means, you know, jeopardizing my chances of winning the game. I uh, am limiting I his snaps so. or whatever it is you have to do to keep him from getting hurt because we got a long season and we cannot Absolutely. have our most important player pulling a hamstring week No, one. I actually agree with you. I, I think you have to manage reps and expectations for C.D. Lamb for week one, right? Because as a player, you want to get out there. You want to do all you can do for your team. All that matters. Everybody excited. Here's the problem, and, and, and Hawk says it best, and he's done it so he knows. It's not only the mileage on your body, it's it's the defense, that the way they play you. Mm. Cleveland's going to play them physically. He, they're going to get up and jam. They're going to make it. It's going to it's going to be contentious off the line, a lot mm-hmm. of hand fighting. When you got to go run block, you got to get down inside. There's a lot that goes into that, and I think people don't understand, like getting, you know, piles, making sure you don't get, you know, rolled up. All the things that go in that people don't ever discuss, that's football shape, and I think Hawk made a great point, and yeah. it's making Making sure he's prepared for all of that if you're that medical staff and, and the coaching staff. Quick yeah, word. that's the, the training camp ramp up period that everybody gets. Now he, right. he has to get that, yeah. uh, even though it's a month and a half later, uh, or else, as you mentioned, they're they're putting him at risk. Yeah. I've seen it a million. We've all seen it a yeah. million times. That hamstring week one, it is not worth it. All right, we're just getting rolling. Well, here. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Now the Cowboys have a plan for that. The Cowboys' plan is actually trying to ramp him up this week you know they're they're making sure he's getting stretched out they're working a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more and letting him recover so that way hopefully he is not destroyed this is the thing that when you're a Dallas Cowboy fan it's maddening that we end up always waiting till the last minute to do anything we really do always you know as Jerry Jones says deadlines make deals get done well they get done but not necessarily done well and the cowboys have done this if you remember the first year that dak prescott was franchise tag where they could have actually signed him in his fourth year this is maddening for everybody out there that says he's greedy understand he got paid six hundred eighty thousand dollars his first three years and the cowboys had him play on the fourth year where he ended up getting basically a million dollars from the NFLPA because it was an incentive of how many starts he had had. Because he had overperformed on his contract, the Cowboys got an extra million dollars to pay him. So we're talking about his first four years making $4 million, taking all of the crack crap and criticism from all of us fans and YouTubers and ESPNs and everything else. The Cowboys had the opportunity that whole fourth year to get a deal done. Instead, they franchise tagged him and literally waited till the last day trying to get the deal hammered out and ran out of time. Y'all forgot that, didn't you? That literally, 359, they're trying to get the last bit of stuff done. And here we are, week one, getting ready to play, and we're still trying to hammer out a deal. Yeah, that's the Cowboys for you, good people. That's the Cowboys. All right, good people, we will keep up with all the news. Hopefully the Cowboys stay healthy all week and get ready to take on the Cleveland Browns. I can't wait. Oh, my goodness. Thursday night, two nights from now, we'll be watching the uh, Baltimore Ravens in Kansas City. Then we'll follow it up the next night, Friday night. Oh, my goodness. The Eagles, that is a yeah, Paramount. Eagles versus um, the Green Bay Packers. And then we'll have a full slate on Sunday. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be real busy for sure. All right, good people, as always, I appreciate you.